that you should watch like the director's videos and some websites. So I'll post that in the chat. So make sure you keep an eye out for that. And also feel free to message me with any questions or requests whilst it's going on. Thank you very much, Savannah. Okay, so um, over to our VIP. So first of all, in my line of people to look at is, oh, uh, let's say hello to Isadora in LA. So Isadora, can you tell us who you are, what you do, and how your day-to-day -day work relates to directors, please? Good morning, everybody. My name is Isadora, and I'm the SVP Director of Video Production at an ad agency in Los Angeles called RPA, Ruben Poster, and I mainly oversee the Honda account in the US, and I have another couple brands that I look after. Um, and I'm on a constant journey to find and discover and try to um, really unlock for me. I'm specifically really interested and always have um, in inclusion behind the camera, um, starting from my early days in, in um, Spanish language advertising in the 90s in the US and just trying to show different stories from different filmmakers' voices other than um, the typical white male storyline. And I think that watching sort of that develop really intensely over the last few months has been incredibly um, exciting, I guess, because it's put a whole new push on the industry and on our clients and um, really shine, given a light to how important um, storytelling is and how powerful the medium is that we all work in. Um, so I'm really excited to meet all of you and to look at your work and only um, adds to my options moving forward. And I remember who you are and I can bring you forth for projects that come up and it's really exciting to see in this forum. So thank you. Great, thank you very much, Isadora. Right, um, uh, Marta, can you uh, do the same? Uh, who are you? Who do you work for? How do you relate to you, direct you directors? Yeah, sure. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Marta. I look after the London office of Canada. We're an international production company, and we have 18 directors that we represent in the UK. I came on board five years ago to open the London office, and I run it day to day um, along with our MD as well and we are responsible basically for finding great work for our directors finding great new directors building their careers and just making sure that we're proud of everything that we make which is sometimes easier and sometimes harder <laughs> but um but yeah that's that's it it's really just about um you know whether we're making music videos or commercials or short films or whatever that we're doing that you know that we just make the best work that we can with the best people Brilliant, thank you. Um, and I don't know if Tanya is here yet. Um, hey. Hooray, hi, hello Tanya. Um, can you do the same please? Who are you, who do you work for and how do you relate to new talent? Hi, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm just going to echo what Isadora and Marta were saying. Really, really looking forward to seeing all of the wide range of work. It's really cool to see like new and up and coming talent doing things that, you know, uh, are hard to do. Um, but basically, I'm a producer at The Mill. I specialise in work that is creatively led by our in-house directors. So that can be a wide range of things from motion design, animation, live action, fully CG, illustration, um, and the list goes on. So we're always looking for new talent, and especially as a female from a minority group myself, um, it's really important to kind of hone in and on that minority group um, and making sure we're kind of hearing that work and staying keen and, and current in all of the disciplines that we work on at the mill. Fantastic, thank you. Thank you all three of you. You're all such really, you really are VIP guests and it's really great to have you. So thank you for taking the time. Um, so now I am going to hand over to our first director who is now then Manuel Tatasciori from um, Italy. You're a white man. So yeah. <laughs> tell us what, tell us about you to, as a director um, and uh, tell us about your video as well, which um, I'll just put in there that it's got a million views, just recently passed a million yeah. views on YouTube, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, tell us a bit about you and your video 
and then we will all watch your video together and then you can ask questions of the VIPs. So over to you. So, uh, hi, my name is Manuel and uh, what about me as a director? Uh, Voodoo Tiger was uh, my second uh, ever video done. So it's my second work published and uh, the third uh, directed as a director. And um, one of the most important thing about me is that I would never think about to be a director in my life because I've done so other things uh, like uh, as being graduate, graduated in, uh, in economy, as being a pro rider uh, in a motorcycle uh, world, world, the world champion. And um, thanks to my artistic passion, I just switch my thinking and uh, started to write uh, plot and ideas for videos and uh, from the first moment um, in fact my first work was a visual um, an art video for for, uh, for a club and uh, before that mo that point uh, all my thinking were went to uh, the video project the live motion and uh, now I just stopped, uh, for example, to paint, and I start. I just mm, write uh, script and uh, work on videos. That's it. Fantastic! I love that you were a motorcycle world champion. That's mm -hmm. amazing. Um, so, uh, how many videos had you made before you made this one, Woody Woodpecker? Just two. Okay. So let's switch over to do that now. I'll thank you very much. That's great. Lots of fun. Um, I love those little people. Right, I'm going to hand over to you now, Manuel. So you have all three VIP guests. Ask them whatever you like. First of all, what do you think about my video? If you can give me some, uh, if you can tell me something about uh, also critics and uh, uh, everything you want. I, I mean, I mean. And um, another thing is that uh, is I would like to know if um, the, the Italian director and uh, in general the video clips, uh, music video clips made in Italy um, as a wave in, uh, in the other country in the world. Because um, when I started to do this work, uh, uh, one of the things is, was that I, um, I wasn't uh, happy about the, 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 the scene uh, and all the production here in Italy because I didn't like what, they, what the others uh, do here. So what do you think about this? Uh, Marcy, um, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, first of all, um, the video is crazy, but I like it. It's really, um, it's, it's really fun to watch and it's really, it's, uh, it's getting more and more rare to get your attention grabbed by a music video. There's a lot of sameness out there. So when it's something completely different, it's, uh, it's, it's, really, it's really fun to watch. Um, I would say I would love to see the grade pushed a little bit more. Um, but overall, I think it's really original. I'm actually really curious to ask you some questions about how you came up with it um, and how much the artist was involved. But before I get to that, I just wanted to answer your other question, which is, um, you know, does do these music videos, you know, made in Italy and an Italian director, do you have weight everywhere else? Well, I think the current situation aside where travel is maybe restricted, I think it almost doesn't matter anymore. I mean, our roster is, you know, all over the place from the US to France and Spain and everywhere. It's more about the work. That's what everyone looks at ultimately. You know, music is an international language as well. It's uh, it, whatever you do in a music video, it's you showing what you're capable of and it's also a place for you to experiment so we i mean at canada specifically we love music videos and it's where most of our directors came from because it just really shows your personality and your taste and your and also your just your ambition so yeah i think keep going thank you uh, about the, um, uh, the 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 work of the artist in the video uh, i can just say that um, i uh, write to the artist and ask him if I could do a video for him and uh, he just say yes about everything the script and other things the one cool thing is that when he came uh, for the set for the day set uh, he didn't know the text uh, of the the, mu the, the music video <laughs> so it was 
was pretty tough. But uh, uh, you know, one of the the thing that um, is so hard for me is uh, at the moment to uh, show before the work is done to the artist what I want to do. In fact, in this case, uh, the artist understood for real what we've done just uh, at the end of the, uh, the the work. So I'm trying to working on it on it now, and that's it. Well, I guess that's just a question of, of your treatment. I mean, that's the only real tool you have and the references that you show someone and the way you articulate what your intentions are. And you know, it's, it's, it's always interesting to get help on that from people that you might want to collaborate with. If there's some yeah. concept art or something else that you can put in there just to sort of paint as accurate a picture as you can. But also knowing that, and I think Isadora will probably back me up on this, but also knowing that there's going to be some room for things to evolve that there's no way you can kind of commit to something at that stage and then just guarantee that that's what you'll make at the end of it. So I think everybody, all parties involved have to understand a little bit that there's a, that by working together, you're going to come up with something that there's no way that you can imagine from the start. Thank you. Yeah. I agree. And probably Tanya definitely from the mill and MPC background definitely knows this world so well. I, I, I'm super curious about, did you do the visual effects yourself? No, no, no. Okay. In fact, I started from the, um, from, from the starting point. I used to collaborate with other people and uh, I tried to um, create a crew around me. In fact, we um, sign all, all our works as a piece of production. So I like to work on the idea, the script, uh, the directing things. Uh, and, uh, but, I know my limits, so I would like to work with other people that can do other things better than me. Yeah, that's, that's great. And I think that trusting and co collaboration is what we all do, you know, unless it's your own project and you take it from the beginning to the end by yourself, you have to trust everyone. And I think Marta's right that in the treatment phase and trying to illustrate what you're trying to achieve at the beginning of a project is a hurdle we all kind of have to face. And I think if it gives you any calm in your soul to know that if you find something exactly what you envision where you're going, then it's already been done. So it's a good thing to not have found some scrap or some, you know, some sort of um, evidence of that technique or that idea having already existed. It's good to have a unique idea so that you weren't able to find something exactly like where you wanted to go and show that artist is actually a good sign, I think, from, from our end. I think me being on the advertising agency side and with corporate facing clients, mm -hmm. um, what we're looking for is a couple pieces of evidence of your talent and what your vision is and the type of director you are. But I think we have to look at it through the filter of, I might as an individual be drawn to your work and the, um, whatever the, the, the theme is, and this is very avant-garde, um, my Honda clients, for instance, um, might not be as accommodating. So they like to be a little more on the nose, as we say. So I have to really show evidence of car work specifically, usually even as an entry position, whether it's a car ad or something with a car in it to get somebody a step in. Um, but I think that that can be achieved in your next project. If you, if you want to approach, if you want to be in a commercial space, you can think about um, what might be facing, you know, corporate facing and something that, you know, I think there are certain brands that would definitely be drawn to your, to your work, but um, some more traditional brands, maybe not so much. So whether you want that to inform where you go on your next project is up to you, but it's really incredible work because it's something unique that you've done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tanya, I'm just going to hold on you for the moment, I'm afraid, because uh, uh, everyone's limited by time. So, Manuel, I'm Manuel. I'm sorry, it's we okay. have to move on. Um, but that was great. Thank you very, very much. Thank um, you. And hang around, and we're going to hear more from you in general, I'm sure. Um, so, just for now, we're going to go to something called Shiny Underground, and... Let me just do a screen share so that I can show you what that is. I love those little people, by the way, going at people's noses. Um, okay, 
shiny underground. So this is a new thing that we're doing. Um, so we're getting together financial supporters, which in this case is Snapper Films. And thank you very much, wonderful Hell from Snapper Films, who's our first supporter. So she's our financial supporter. And our activist partner this week is Liberty. And we're gonna to speak to Mahadi from Liberty in a minute. But we get them together. And uh, through working together, we're able to reach filmmakers who are outside the friends and family in the industry bubble because that's quite a difficult group to reach. Um, and because of Snapper, we are able to give free access to um, five directors who are outside of the um, industry bubble. And um, Mahadi, would you like to just come and tell us uh, what you do with Liberty and, and how come you're reaching those people? Amazing. Thank you for having me. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you all um, virtually. Anyway, my name is Mahadi. I work at Liberty, um, which is a youth consultancy um, and a culture studio, which basically means we connect young people, which are 16 to 25s, um, with brands. As well as doing that work, we also have programs um, to help creatives get into the industry, whether that's the editors, directors, script writers, or anything it may be, um, we help them work towards their goals within the industry. Um, and yeah, we've got a massive office in Brixton, um, here in London, where we also have a free co-working space for people who are 16 to 25 to come in and work on their films. And essentially we're all about trying to break down those barriers of access. Um, so that's why like an open door to our office is a bit of like a physical metaphor or simile, I guess, um, to the creative industry as well as the film industry. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for having me. Thanks very much, Mahadi. That's brilliant. Liberty sounds so cool. Um, we're going to come back to you in a little bit. Um, but now we're going to move on to Jessie Ayres, who's our second director. So, um, hi, Jessie. Hey. Hello. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Totally um, good. Yeah, I'm Jessie. I'm the um, director of Waves. Um, and actually Maro, who helped me film it, is in the audience. He's part of the reason it was um, able to be made at all, really, with no budget for all the kind of favours I, I dragged him into. Um, Do you want to say hello? I, I have already in the, um, in the you chat. You can say hello if you like. Oh, yeah, Maro, make yourself, make yourself known. He's in South Africa. You have to talk, I think. He might have muted himself. Vera Pen. There he is. Yeah. Anyway, right. But anyway, <laughs> he's in there. Um, but yeah, so I'm the director of Waves. Um, I studied um, documentary filmmaking, which um, informs a lot of my work today. I work in documentaries and branded content. Um, and Waves was a kind of passion project of mine that I shot while I was in South Africa and it grew um, quite organically. I could kind of take my time with it, um, but it ended up um, uh, still kind of reflecting, I think what I'm mainly interested in, which is finding kind of new ways to tell socially conscious stories, um, more kind of cinematic ways or different ways to tell those stories um, with obviously like a lot of respect for the subject matters. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I'm interested in, that's, and that's Waves. Fantastic. I think, uh, thank you, Jessie. I'll, I'll, uh, same thing, there's a link in chat. Uh, so if you can, go and watch it there, because it's a slightly better experience. Um, uh, what I was just going to say was, um, uh, it's actually won gazillions of awards as well, hasn't it? Yeah, and, uh, it's it has, totally yeah. In the place. Gazillion, that, that would be the new formal term. <laughs> but this is, this is, what film is this? I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, does it look like waves then? It doesn't, does it? Uh, <laughs> different kind of waves. There we go. Um, yes, it's won about eight awards, I think, and a social impact media award. Oh, many congratulations. Um, here we go. Oh, that is 
it's such an emotive documentary. Um, thank you, Jesse. So um, over to you. Um, ask. Could, can you go to Tanya first at the mill? Yeah. Thank you. Hi, Tanya. Hi. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. Um, I guess any any thoughts or questions? No. It's um. It's definitely traditional um live action and. To be fair, I don't work on a lot of long form work. Yeah. Um, the thing that I did take away from it that I, that I love is your transitional tools. Um, and you've basically picked specific graphical moments to connect scenes, which I love. And there's not necessarily obvious moments in there. The camera's facing down quite a lot, which is like the, mm -hmm. of the mood. Um, I guess my question for you is, what was the most difficult in getting this together? Did this like, was this a happy accident or was this something you consciously went out to do in terms of your editorial um, composition? Um, no, it definitely grew, it definitely developed into this. I think when I, when I went there, I didn't really know what I was going to make. And I just um, met the charity, it's a surfing charity, um, met them, then I met the girls and then I slowly got to sort of see what reality was like for them. And, um, South Africa is such a place of high contrast. It's sort of like you have these like be beautiful landscapes and you have this sort of like huge amounts of wealth and then huge amounts of poverty. It's full of contradictions and contrasts and, and that's what kind of surfing was as well for them, this sort of like beautiful escape. Um, so yeah, we kind of played with that a bit sort of to kind of revert expectations at the beginning of the film. Yeah. Sorry. Are you developing your career as you want to at the moment, Jesse? Is there anything that, um, that any of the VIPs could perhaps help with or advise on? Yeah, I guess, I guess this is not a very commercial project, at least I view it as maybe not. Um, but probably that's, this is the sort of subject matter that I'm quite interested in or, or things along these lines with some sort of impact. Um, and I have worked um, with a lot of like, I tend to then fit quite well into sort of like uh, brands impact um, arms, um, like the Nike series for sort of their um, sports, uh, sports kind of fund um, and things like that. But I guess, yeah, like how much, how much space do you think there is in all of your companies for this sort of work? Like how, how does it fit for you? I mean, I think that you, I think that the documentary filmmaking genre, first of all, your move, your piece is so moving and thank you for telling that story. Um, and I think that right now, I think there's such a focus on how to be a smaller crew, more nimble. And I think that my assumption is, is that you were probably doing this on very little funding and you really made this happen um, with very few people. And I think that if that's the case, that's an incredible skill set right there and is incredibly marketable and interesting. Um, and I think that there's a lot of room for longer form storytelling and social. And we do a lot of, you know, we create a lot of content around personal stories and emotional storytelling, um, depending on which client we're working with. But I think there's definitely, it translates these days. And I think you can use that documentary filmmaking and sort of more um, just the smaller crew adaptation uh, to your advantage. Marta, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I mean, I think um, there's, again, there's, there's definitely room for that because I think the way that from, at least from our perspective and the sort of briefs that we're seeing, the way that commercials are going is, you know, people are very wise to the audience and people either want something that's completely fantastical and very obviously constructed or they want something that's very real and you can't overlap those two things really and I think being able to tell a very authentic story and work with real people rather than a band a brand kind of constructing some kind of reality I think that's that's very valuable and right now you know the, the viewer is very wise and they they don't want to be sold something pretending to be real. They want to they want to see that for real. And I think having that skill is is super valuable. Thank you. You've got time for another quickie if you if yeah. you want to come in, Yeah, I guess um 
I guess I have often started working for companies with this whole like, you know, I can self shoot and I'm used to working with strip back um, crews and small budgets, but then I sometimes find I sort of get pigeonholed in that, like, you know, just sort of, uh, you know, minuscule budgets where then you do have to um, cut down on quality. So I guess like, how can you, while it's important to streamline and have those skills, how can you, you know, then be, get a company to take a risk on you with a bigger budget? Oh, it's probably I mean, I can, oh, go on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, from a, from a kind of, you know, I, I don't like this word, but you know, when you're talking about selling a director, it's, it's a lot to do with, with trust. It's how much the person that you're working with, whose project it is, trusts you and the way that, you know, that's something that we, we always try and do is to make sure that we're building good relationships with people because, you know, they, people may want to approach for a certain director but the brief may suit somebody else more and sometimes people are willing to take a leap if we can connect the dots and say okay but maybe this person doesn't have the exact brand you're looking for the very kind of linear clear experience but there are all these other factors and sometimes it's the production too or the other people that you bring on board so um kind of like what isadora was saying about you know needing a, a car on a reel that's something we come up with come up against a lot um that kind of thing is like if you're doing food or cars they're very specialized things to shoot when it comes to just the technical side of it so you really need to if a director maybe doesn't have that experience but has something similar like fashion or cosmetics or something that's also about just making things look really really good you might want to then back them up with a really experienced dp who has a lot of that on their reel you know you, the production company or whoever is on your team if they have that experience too it's it's kind of like a casting thing really and it's about how it's how you can present somebody and say like okay we acknowledge that maybe certain things are lacking or not there yet but how can we fill in those gaps in a way that makes everyone feel confident and would the director kind of discuss that with you before i guess like what would they do to get you on site to kind of be on there, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's, I guess, I guess that when it comes to us, you know, it's, it's about, it's more that we've found a brief that we feel somebody could do. And, you know, you kind of, it's also, you know, when, when we look at directors careers, it's about thinking about where they've been and where they want to go mm -hmm. and where they can go and how you connect that path in the meantime. So which bits of work maybe it's not the ultimate thing that you want to be doing, but what is the thing that will get you there, that will get you the experience, that will get you to meet the right people, that, you know, just, just helps to sort of step by step. You know, it's not every single piece of work doesn't have to be your ultimate dream, but there's always something to be learned and there's always a creative opportunity. So it's, it's finding a way to, to put all those ingredients together. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm going to have to step in. I, I'm sorry that um, I'm cutting you short there, but... Uh... They're great, great film, great questions, great answers. Um, and it sounds like reps and production companies are going to be good people to be talking to and checking out. Yeah. Um, I, I forgot to mention at the beginning of this, actually, um, Jesse's an example of someone who's uh, submitted work to Shiny in our, in our newer, broader categories now, which is you don't have to be uh, someone who's only been working for a short time as a director. If you've made work that's under five minutes and under a 5K budget, $5,000, 5,000 euros, 5,000 pounds, whatever, um, you can still get in there. And, and as was alluded to, Waves was made on a pretty tight budget. So thanks very much, Jesse. Thank you. Thanks, Caroline. Okay, over to uh, the next bit, which is Opportunity Knocks, which is uh, some very nice uh, opportunities that we have found for um, directors and other people, actually. Um, and thank you very much to Mahadi, because she, again, is going to read it out to us. Mahadi from, Liv from Liberty. Thank you. Oh, sorry, I thought they were going to pop up on the screen. Oh, is it, not? Yeah. is it is it screen sharing for people? Yeah, but it's something. It's a different tab on here for me. Oh no! Yeah, um, I think that's my short. <laughs> it's the Vimeo Still Life um, link. Oh, is it? I see. Oh, thank you. Um, okay, so if I what should I do? Shall I minimise that? 
Screen sharing is paused. Stop share. I'm just going to start again. Thank you very much there. Keynotes. That's what we wanted, isn't it? There we are. Is that good? Yeah. Amazing. Perfect. I feel like I'm reading in front of um, the class. Um, <laughs> awesome. So we've got some amazing opportunities that have come through. Um, so Dada Fest um, are inviting uh, DDEF or disabled artists to apply for either 10 micro commissions uh, of up to £1,000 or one of four festival commissions of up to £2,500. Um, so that's one thing coming up, so do definitely apply. Sure Scripts is open for script submissions worldwide, so this is out to everyone. I'm not 100% sure if the first one, uh, Karen, I don't know if you could clear this up for me, if the first one is just UK. Um, that's a really good question. I should have checked that. I'm afraid I don't know. Uh, I'm going to guess that it probably is actually because they advertise in pounds. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, no. No worries. We'll double check on that for you, everyone. Um, but Sure Scripts is open for script submissions worldwide, so that everyone on this call can apply. They have a lot of industry support um, with between fifteen thousand dollars and five. I, mean, I think that's fifty thousand um, dollars. And so yeah. definitely look out for that. Um, and then Stink Films, one of the world's best production companies, are looking for music videos and Stink Rising, uh, the new talent division. Um, so definitely get applying for that as well. All the links have been dropped in the chat by Savannah. Thank you for that. Um, so yeah, get applying and then be more detail on if the first one is UK or worldwide in the links as well. Brilliant, thank you very much. That's really great, Mahardi, thank you. Uh, yeah. And uh, Stink are one of the best production companies in the world. So are Canada just to make that clear. <laughs> Thank you, Caroline. And, and I agree, they are, they are. I'm a big fan as well. Um, okay, over to Serafima. Um, hi, Serafima. Hello, everyone. Lovely to meet you all. Um, I'm Serafima, and I work as a video editor and a sound designer at an ethical creative agency called Nice and Serious. Um, I also program for Shot of the Week and Director's Notes. And in the little spare time that I have, I work on my own projects, which so far have all been actually animations. And you are about to see my latest one uh, called Still Life, which is a rotoscope animation, which celebrates um, kind of the beauty of movement and, um, you know, being close to other human beings, which is basically what I've missed the most during lockdown. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Okay, so, um... I am now going to get blooming um, Google Chrome back again. In my panic, I closed Google Chrome. And so now I'm going to have to stop panicking and get it back again. Here we are. Okay. Um, can I say about your other video while I'm just doing that, Serafima? Oh, you can talk about all my videos. Okay. <laughs> so um, <laughs> the, the first time I saw Serafima's work was um, a similar rotoscoping project, but she'd taken pieces from um, real life porn films, but bits that she really liked, uh, and made a really beautiful erotic film out of it. It was just fabulous. Um, oh. Thank you. <laughs> I really, really liked it and uh, I really like the style. And here we go. Lovely. <laughs> really nice. Um, right, Serafima, over to you. Okie dokes, thank you. Um, so my first question is to Isadora, if that's all right. Uh, lovely to meet you, first of all. Um, I was wondering, how do you think coronavirus is going to affect um, live action projects? Um, in the immediate, but also um, kind of in the distant future, um, is video production ever going to be the same, or is it doomed, or should we all become animators? <laughs> what do you think? So funny that you're asking that because you seem like you're in the perfect world of you know, animation. <laughs> you're safe. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I'm sure my a lot of people on this call are pretty aware that things are not as they you know used to be, and we're struggling to pull together live action shoots and what those might look like around what's going on in the United States, which is an inconsistent sort of um, oversight of 
depending on where you are, there are different role, uh, rules in play and restrictions. So, and they change and can change by the hour. So we're uh, in a very um, interesting time where we need more time, more money to produce. And there really isn't that being, um, that shift really hasn't come from the client side. So we're still sort of working through what a general live action shoot might look like and bidding a few different jobs right now, but it's, it's touch and go. And we're, even though we're bidding them, we aren't quite sure, you know, ultimately if, you know, a month from now when we're supposed to actually film what that will look like, you know, what, what will be happening and it will be location dependent, whether we're, in Los Angeles or in Utah or where we might go. So it's a, it's a great time to be in post-production and animation. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm very curious about your film and um, what your process is and whether it's beautiful and the choreography is incredible and it looks like you fused maybe three different dance styles together and the transitions between them are incredible. And I'm, did you have the music track first or how, what was your process? That's right. I decided to, for once, be kind of guided by the music. So I went on Artlist, uh, which is like a library for like music library website. And I was just like, you know, I'm going to go with whatever I'm drawn towards. And I initially found this and I kind of skipped through it, but it kind of got inside my skin and I it kept like replaying in my head so I was like you know what I love it when you couscous so let's just go with it why not <laughs> and um, so then the process was just very much um, in the editing stage so I plowed through probably thousands of uh, YouTube videos of professional dancers because my my criteria was um, their five pairs so I wanted them all to look different to have a totally different style but they also had to have moves which kind of matched and to go with the music so that I could work on those transitions smoothly. So that was really long and really uh, painful, but it had to be done. And then the fun part was actually animating at the end. Turned out beautifully. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad you like. Um, and thank you for answering my question. It's really interesting. It's um, a lot of my filmmaker friends are kind of like in the same boat where we, we don't quite know what's going to happen. And, but you know, I'm, I'm positive. And well, you know, it's always road scoping, right? <laughs> yeah, I think in this day and age, you know, having an Instagram following is a very powerful thing. I think there are a lot of clients who are looking at Instagram followings for artists like you or anyone on this call who might be making films. Is that having that social media presence and even just putting your artwork up there, and um, and that's a great way to have basically representation, self-representation outside of your production representation if you don't quite have that yet. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Amazing. Cool, and my next question is to Tanya, if that's all right. Hi, Tanya. Um, so I was wondering whether you've noticed um, any kind of new trends or styles that have emerged in the VFX world in the last few months due to the coronavirus? Yeah, um, actually it picks up on what you were saying in regards to um, the restrictions of obviously the live action shooting and, and people on set and you know having a large crew. What's been really effective during lockdown um, is, is the art of animation and motion design and be able to come up with a creative solution um, to briefs that otherwise would have just been shot. So we saw a large surge in the kind of ask for motion graphics, illustrations, cell animation, um, and stuff that felt within particular looks. Um, so yeah, it, it's definitely a creative solution that we can bring. And also there is thousands of stuff that's already been shot. Like what you've done, you've gone, you've researched, you've looked for things you can put together. And so you, you can maintain the realism in movement, which is what you've done, which is really, really beautiful, but just giving it a new look. I mean, live action isn't dead. We, we've shot lots of things already. So it's about finding, if you really do want real moments, you can go and find them and make a film still um, with a message, which is exactly what you've done. And like, like Dora was saying that, you know, Instagram is, is a fantastic space. With everyone working remotely, we've been able to tap into so much different talent, which we would otherwise not really work with. 
um, because they can't work directly in the mill. It's a very old way of working, but because everyone has been set up remote over the last four months, it means that we've been able to work remotely with a lot more talent. Um, so yeah, I mean, just because our offices are in London and US and Europe, it doesn't mean that we can't work with someone in China or, you know, uh, in other areas of Asia and so it's been it's been really really I think progressive mm. yeah no I agree with you I think one of the few really positive things that you know that has come out of this is this this distance between people has kind of dis disappeared a little bit and we've been forced to kind of make it work which is which is really lovely and it's so nice to be able to work with so many people all over the world um, can I come in and, and say we're at um, nine minutes to now and uh, if, if we're going to squeeze in the um, breakout rooms for five minutes uh, we, we need to do that now really so thank you Serafima that was really fantastic um, <laughs> such a beautiful piece of work um, so uh, the breakout rooms continue to elude me in terms of excellent management of them so it's just going to remain as a fairly random thing so in a minute I'm going to press a button and everyone's going to appear uh, in little well you're going to get little links asking you to join a breakout room and if you just click yes uh, you'll go into that room and talk to strangers probably uh, and if, if you don't like doing that press the leave meeting button here we go uh, create breakout rooms right bye right hello everyone coming back again um i think that yeah we're all back again brilliant um so final final bits just to let you know um we're taking a break over august we'll be back again in september with weekly shows so there'll still be the director showcase we're going to do more of the inside commissioning shows so that's going to be inside music video commissioning inside branded content commissioning and so on we're really up for taking ideas from you what do you want what would you like to find out more about who would you like to meet and and talk to on screen um uh thank you to our brilliant guests for uh supporting us all and being great thank you to the mill for being our sponsor and uh if you'd like to support us, please tell people about us because um, the more people we get to the events, the uh, more sponsors we can approach. So uh, apart from the fact that it's lovely to meet lots of people anyway, um, that's, that's a practical way to support us. Thank you very much. Have a lovely summer. Thanks, Caroline. Bye. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Caroline. Thank you. Bye. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Bye.